tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hi folks, the most recent update of Arnold has a major improvement, advancement, whatever they that's how they call it. They have the imager. What the hell is an imager? I'll show you, it's nothing magic really. And it reminds me a little bit of Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom for well Arnold for rendering. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm not smoking. It's a, it's a bottle <laughs> with hot water. Well, enjoy this video. First of all, we need to check this. Go to Windows and to Settings Preferences and to the Plugin Manager. In the Plugin Manager, type in MT. That's Maya 2 Arnold in this case. And you probably have something like this, Maya to Arnold and uh, MLL, that's an uh, MLL script. Loaded, auto load, I would suggest that you have both things ticked on because we need Arnold all the time when working with Maya. And now comes the info box. And the info box in my case tells, in, tells me it's a plugin version 4.1. That's good, that's the current version. And if we have a look at the website, that's uh, the Arnold website, in this case for Arnold, MTA, MTOA 4.1 introduces Arnold 6.1. So it's two different numbers. This is the version number of Arnold for all platforms, for Softimage, Houdini, Cinema 4D, Katana, and 3D Studio Max. But uh, the translator for Arnold to Maya, or from Maya to Arnold, is 4.1. And if you don't have this, you won't find the enhancements here, like the images. And that's what we're going to talk about. The images have uh, one, two, three, that's uh, five options here. And uh, we'll try to locate them and uh, use them. Unfortunately, uh, the Solid Angle people who program Arnold don't provide us with this lovely model of a car here. But... Um, we can do many things with it, um, with the with the new enhancements. Uh, there are other enhancements which we're not uh, we're not talking about today, and uh, they are down here. Anyway, they leave us pretty much alone when we click here. We see quite amazing things, but how do we enable this image or whatever? And if you have a look at this screenshot AI image exposure one, well, where is it? Uh, it took me quite a while to actually locate it. What it does basically is um, this is the default image and you can change the uh, amount of uh, white balance and uh, of the shadows and etc. But I'll uh, show you uh, this in detail now. I loaded this scene into, uh, actually I created this scene. If you don't know how to get this gentleman here, Richard is his name, Richard in German, uh, he was scanned by the render people in Cologne and he is for free here, uh, built into my general editors and then we need the content browser and we have all these things here and under people we find him, for example, Richard Post. So uh, that's where uh, who he is and this is just a simple uh, number three. Uh, I placed him in uh, this scenery, but this really doesn't matter. And now I want to show you how we can go about it. We have uh, a Skydome light, which is basically the uh, light simulating the atmosphere. It sits here, by the way, lights, uh, physical sky. That's what it's called. Now, when we render the scene, and this is the image we get. The, the background, I textured it with uh, flakes from Arnold. It's not important for this tutorial at all. This is just a gray shader with a ramp going from black down there to more or less white. And he has his own textures and it's sort of in the middle of the sunlight. 
and um, so his shadow is slightly behind him so the, the the sun is up here it does not really matter for this procedure which we're now invoking um, where is this AI image exposure one and I'll show you where it's where you don't find it you go to the hypershade it's this icon and press tab and then you can type in imager and you don't find it here I thought why is that where is it then this new enhancement well it's right here you go to the render settings it's this icon I think you can reach it through the Arnold menu anyway and um, in this section here you have the common section where I set the uh, name of the file and the image format uh, rendering from frame 1 to 450 etc whatever you like here on the system you can choose the CPU or GPU if you have a GPU which supports the system in my case it's an RTX 2060 uh, it does support that kind of rendering and in the Arnold renderer settings you now have interesting things all these were in the previous version but down here are the images ta-ta 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 and uh, when you open it it's empty and you add an imager and now you have this um, collection of whatever you want to do and the first thing is well a color correction let's try it out so we've selected it and uh, actually minimize it select the AI imager color correct one minimize it because now I have it here in the attribute editor and now we need to invoke rendering in the viewport because uh, this is the nice thing interactive uh, appreciation of what we'll actually get with a high quality renderer when we invoke this with the menu here so it's a viewport rendering and it looks like this We don't need to wait until Arnold cleans up all the grain but we can now I said it's it reminds me of Lightroom what we can now do is we change the saturation of this image and uh, we can do it by this and you see the saturation is much more strong now he has a really orange face now and when we reduce it we go to black and white so it's right here in the middle is the starting point the contrast similar makes pale a pale image and here a very strong contrast with a lot of grain obviously when you raise the contrast too much and uh, the gain is uh, basically fading it into black well it has a shadow section and here we have the shadows but this is not the shadow and here we have a shadow but this is not the shadow we're talking about in the imager here the imager takes the whole photo as one rendering photo and the imager does not know that this man is creating a shadow down here uh, under shadow they understand only what Lightroom would understand or Photoshop or all would understand uh, by talking about saturation but uh, in the contrast you can see that um, here we don't have a Maya shadow a shadow from the light but we just have a dark area and that's why why the imager calls it and interprets it as a dark sh a shadow part of this image that's so this is uh, quite different from uh, what we know from uh, 3d world so it takes this image as an image as a flat image and it makes manipulations here in Arnold now I don't know if you need it but uh, maybe you do the midtones this image is quite balanced that's why we have a lot of midtones here as you can see here it's it affects the contrast affects the midtones only so the not too bright and not too dark areas of the image doesn't have to do anything with the shadows here so this is the first one I want to introduce to you and the second one 
and f for the further ones you can try try them out yourself add an imager and I create a lens effect and the lens effect is uh, very simple really it just has a vignetting uh, value here and when we raise this value we get a vignetting effect this is a typical post-production thing but we can also render it and in the rendering which I'll show you at the end of this tutorial now is basically taken advantage of all these new imager features here we'll have to find out what this is being needed for it looks a little bit like going into the direction that we don't need a post-production we can render things and they will stay as they are as we rendered it as opposed to the typical working processes that we deliver rendered images or videos to the post-production guys who apply filter effects like these have a nice day bye bye